Uh, I'm Timon Thomas. I started out in, in Hungary as a Java developer after finishing at the, universe, uh, the Budapest University of Technology. Then I continued my uh, journey in Denmark, actually, uh, where I became a robot systems engineer. I really have a fascination for um, medical solutions, and uh, that motivated my uh, joining of SICE as well. Um, I really wanted to contribute to something which, which matters. Um, I also took part, uh, actually I lived half a year in Germany, tried to contribute to the development of artificial improstheses. Uh, that's a very interesting topic actually, that's uh, one of my favorites. I really want to get back to that at one point. But uh, in the meantime I really became fascinated with data and uh, data-driven solutions, developing complex systems. And I wanted to try out myself as an architect as a, uh, and as a tech lead. And uh, since then I was looking for jobs where I had such an opportunity. Most people might know size about the, um, the lenses in their glasses, but actually that's one of our smallest business. So what size is really about is producing really high quality uh, lenses and microscopic solutions, like our lenses, which power uh, some of the most sophisticated uh, solutions uh, created by ASML, which uh, you know, I mean, most mobile phones and, and computers, uh, which are uh, whose uh, hardware is manufactured uh, through extreme lithography, uh, benefit from those uh, solutions. Size is huge, right? And traditionally, traditionally, we are a hardware company, not a software company. Our main focus is developing uh, software in-house, which facilitates uh, better use of our hardware and interaction uh, and, and productivity within the company. So fortunately, um, we have really good teams specialized in these fields, um, starting from data-driven solutions to, to, to process management and um, low-level software, driving our optical microscopes and uh, even more advanced hardware devices. So uh, inversion of control is all about, uh, it's, a, it's a computer, it's a programming paradigm. It's not an actual implementation, it's a way of thinking and how uh, that, that facilitates the, the uh, development of uh, um, of modular frameworks. It's a very important part of every framework, more like an aspect of a framework. And uh, what it does is it separates the control flow from the behavior uh, granting components of a, uh, of a framework. It decouples these things and enables us to, to separate um, the, con the, the concerns um, and then tie these things together in a meaningful way. Uh, I think the biggest benefit uh, of IOC is that it enables people to, to decouple certain pieces of um, behavior when they implement frameworks. And it also facilitates the um, easy switching of components, which is very beneficial for testing. Stubbing and mocking components is, is very difficult. It's not always uh, given that people go for test-driven development. Maybe they, they shouldn't, but, uh, but they should always keep in mind that their code should be testable. And if they adapt IOC in a proper way, it should facilitate this. In my opinion, uh, it, it's suited from, from one point of view and from another point of view, not so much. Uh, what I mean is that hi Python is a, is a high-level generic programming language which has a lot of features, uh, programming features which, or language features, which um, make people very productive uh, and suitable for, for such things. What I mean is that it has uh, functions as first-class citizens, lambdas, um, closures, whatever. These things are very useful when you implement IOC um, or one form of IOC or another. Uh, on the other hand, it also lacks certain features which make Python uh, very robust. So you really have to pay attention when you, when you do certain things and you really have uh, really stable and, and, and mature tooling to support you. Otherwise, it's, uh, it requires a lot of self-control from the developer. What I mean is Python, for example, doesn't have constants. Um, Python is also very flexible, which can be beneficial when somebody is just developing small things like scripts. But when you work on a framework, this flexibility can really be a drawback as well because it allows too much. Uh, on the other hand, as I mentioned, tooling can help a lot. And that's uh, one of the things that we really embrace here at SICE. 
So um, adapting a good uh, um, type annotation framework like PyDentic, um, um, coupling it with a, with, a, with a static type checker, um, having um, good processes like uh, regular code reviews, um, and so on. These go a long way in securing uh, a stable development experience. Yeah, well, overgeneralization is one of them. So um, I also sometimes fall into this <laughs> pitfall. It's uh, really easy to go overboard, but one has to follow clean practices, only implement stuff that they need, that they have a real user-driven experience, uh, that they really need for, for, for because it stems from a user-driven demand. On the other hand, uh, what people can also mess up, um, let's say, is, is if they don't think about which type of IOC they implement. So the, as I mentioned, this is just a paradigm. It's not an actual pattern that they, they, um, they, they can use directly. So um, I will talk about more about this during my presentation, but um, depending on how development happens, is it, hap is it only happening inside the, uh, or will it involve externals who will, not, uh, who will just contribute snippets of code to your code base as plugins? And, uh, or, these things are very important because then a certain type of uh, a certain type of IOC needs to be adapted in order to facilitate growth. I would say they should start going lean, getting rid of the slack, all the unused code pieces. Because when you start to the, the major point when you want to implement IOC is that you need to find the right abstractions. If you if you have a cluttered code base or, or too much unused stuff that you carry, carry on as a tag depth, uh, it, it basically blinds you. So first thing, get rid of all of the slack um, and then try to uh, try to find good interfaces derived from the actual requirements, not your solution itself, of course. On the other hand, tooling, as I mentioned, is essential. Uh, for Python, it doesn't have types and so on. It's it's very important to to have some support there. Otherwise, uh, losing sight of uh, clean coding can be, yeah, quite quite common, especially in the face of uh, yeah pressing deadlines and stuff.